Good morning, friend of mine. I am Pastor Hugh McKenzie, a pastor from the Seventh-day Adventist Church. A happy day to you and your loved ones. Every morning we share two chapters from the audio Bible narrated by Alexander Scorby and a devotional from one of the chapters shared. May you be spiritually blessed and refreshed as you listen. Please share the presentations so that someone else may be blessed. May God continue to bless you and your family as you listen every day. God bless you. Chapter 6 Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. O Ephraim, what shall I do unto thee? O Judah, what shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is as a morning cloud, and as the early dew it goeth away. Therefore have I hewed them by the prophets, I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and thy judgments are as the light that goeth forth. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. But they, like men, have transgressed the covenant. There have they dealt treacherously against me. Gilead is a city of them that work iniquity and is polluted with blood. And as troops of robbers wait for a man, so the company of priests murder in the way by consent, for they commit lewdness. I have seen an horrible thing in the house of Israel. There is the whoredom of Ephraim. Israel is defiled. Also, O Judah, he hath set an harvest for thee when I returned the captivity of my people. Chapter 20 And it came to pass in the seventh year, in the fifth month, the tenth day of the month, that certain of the elders of Israel came to inquire of the Lord, and sat before me. Then came the word of the Lord unto me, saying, Son of man, speak unto the elders of Israel, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. Are ye come to inquire of me? As I live, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. Wilt thou judge them, son of man? Wilt thou judge them? Cause them to know the abominations of their fathers, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, In the day when I chose Israel, and lifted up mine hand unto the seed of the house of Jacob, and made myself known unto them in the land of Egypt, when I lifted up mine hand unto them, saying, I am the Lord your God, in the day that I lifted up mine hand unto them, to bring them forth of the land of Egypt, into a land that I had espied for them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands, then said I unto them, Cast ye away every man the abominations of his eyes, and defile not yourselves with the idols of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. But they rebelled against me, and would not hearken unto me. They did not every man cast away the abominations of their eyes, neither did they forsake the idols of Egypt. Then I said, I will pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the midst of the land of Egypt. But I wrought for my name's sake, that it should not be polluted before the heathen among whom they were, in whose sight I made myself known unto them in bringing them forth out of the land of Egypt. Wherefore I caused them to go forth out of the land of Egypt and brought them into the wilderness. And I gave them my statutes and showed them my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. Moreover, also I gave them my Sabbaths, to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctify them. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walked not in my statutes, and they despised my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. And my Sabbaths they greatly polluted. Then I said I would pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. But I wrought for my name's sake, that it should not be polluted before the heathen, in whose sight I brought them out. Yet also I lifted up my hand unto them in the wilderness, that I would not bring them into the land which I had given them, flowing with milk and honey, which is the glory of all lands, because they despised my judgments, and walked not in my statutes, but polluted my Sabbath, for their heart went after their idols. Nevertheless, mine eye spared them from destroying them, neither did I make an end of them in the wilderness. But I said unto their children in the wilderness, Walk ye not in the statutes of your fathers, 
neither observe their judgments, nor defile yourselves with their idols. I am the Lord your God. Walk in my statutes, and keep my judgments, and do them. And hallow my Sabbaths, and they shall be a sign between me and you, that ye may know that I am the Lord your God. Notwithstanding, the children rebelled against me. They walked not in my statutes, neither kept my judgments to do them, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. They polluted my Sabbaths. Then I said I would pour out my fury upon them to accomplish my anger against them in the wilderness. Nevertheless, I withdrew mine hand and wrought for my name's sake that it should not be polluted in the sight of the heathen in whose sight I brought them forth. I lifted up mine hand unto them also in the wilderness that I would scatter them among the heathen and disperse them through the countries because they had not executed my judgments but had despised my statutes and had polluted my Sabbaths and their eyes were after their father's idols. Wherefore, I gave them also statutes that were not good, and judgments whereby they should not live. And I polluted them in their own gifts, in that they caused to pass through the fire all that openeth the womb, that I might make them desolate, to the end that they might know that I am the Lord. Therefore, son of man, speak unto the house of Israel, and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Yet in this your fathers have blasphemed me, in that they have committed a trespass against me. For when I had brought them into the land, for the which I lifted up mine hand to give it to them, then they saw every high hill and all the thick trees, and they offered there their sacrifices, and there they presented the provocation of their offering. There also they made their sweet savour, and poured out there their drink offerings. And I said unto them, what is the high place whereunto ye go? And the name thereof is called Bema unto this day. Wherefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Are ye polluted after the manner of your fathers, and commit ye whoredom after their abominations? For when ye offer your gifts, when ye make your sons to pass through the fire, ye pollute yourselves with all your idols even unto this day. And shall I be inquired of by you, O house of Israel? As I live, saith the Lord God, I will not be inquired of by you. And that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all, that ye say, We will be as the heathen, as the families of the countries, to serve wood and stone. As I live, saith the Lord God, surely with a mighty hand and with a stretched out arm and with fury poured out will I rule over you. And I will bring you out from the people, and will gather you out of the countries wherein ye are scattered with a mighty hand, and with a stretched out arm, and with fury poured out. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face, like as I pleaded with your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt. So will I plead with you, saith the Lord God. And I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. And I will purge out from among you the rebels, and them that transgress against me. I will bring them forth out of the country where they sojourn, and they shall not enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. As for you, O house of Israel, thus saith the Lord God, Go ye, serve ye every one his idols, and hereafter also, if ye will not hearken unto me. But pollute ye my holy name no more with your gifts and with your idols. For in mine holy mountain, in the mountain of the height of Israel, said the Lord God, there shall all the house of Israel, all of them in the land, serve me. There will I accept them, and there will I require your offerings and the first fruits of your obligations with all your holy things. I will accept you with your sweet savour when I bring you out from the people and gather you out of the countries wherein ye have been scattered, and I will be sanctified in you before the heathen. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, when I shall bring you into the land of Israel, into the country for the which I lifted up mine hand to give it to your fathers. And there shall ye remember your ways and all your doings, wherein ye have been defiled. And ye shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for all your evils that ye have committed. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, when I have wrought with you for my name's sake, not according to your wicked ways, nor according to your corrupt doings. O ye house of Israel, saith the Lord God. Moreover the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward the south, and drop thy word toward the south, 
and prophesy against the forest of the south field, and say to the forest of the south, Hear the word of the Lord, thus saith the Lord God. Behold, I will kindle a fire in thee, and it shall devour every green tree in thee, and every dry tree. The flaming flame shall not be quenched, and all faces from the south to the north shall be burned therein, and all flesh shall see that I, the Lord, have kindled it. It shall not be quenched. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, they say of me, Doth he not speak parables? A wonderful day and a restful night to you, wherever you are on this planet. May the blessings of God attend you wherever you are. May he protect and guide you. In some places it is very hot. In other places it is very cold. In other places it is raining a lot. In other places there is flooding. But wherever you are, we trust that the heavenly angels are watching over you. And once again, as we focus on God's word, may we be reminded once again of his love, of his mercy, of his grace, and of his power. Today we are focusing on Ezekiel chapter 20 and Hosea chapter 6. Hosea chapter 6 and Ezekiel chapter 20. I'm reading now Ezekiel 20, verses 11, 12, 13, and 14. The Bible declares, God speaking says, And I gave them my statues, and shewed them my judgments, which, if a man do, he shall even live in them. Moreover also I gave them my sabbaths, to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctify them. But the house of Israel rebelled against me in the wilderness. They walked not in my statues, and they despised my judgments, which if a man do, he shall even live in them. And my sabbaths they greatly polluted. Then I said, I would pour out my fury upon them in the wilderness to consume them. But I wrought for my name's sake, that it should not be polluted before the heathen, in whose sight I brought them out. Today's message is entitled, A Time to Rest, A Time to Rest. Let us pray, Father. We ask now that your Holy Spirit will hover over each person, each of us, as we listen to your word. May we hear your voice through the pages of the Bible. In Jesus' name, amen. Friend of mine, friend of mine, your birthday is a specific day and a date. Your birthday is a specific day and a date. Your vehicle license plate number is a specific number which only you are supposed to have. Your social security number is a specific number that is yours and is to be used to identify you only. Having said the foregoing, why then does it seem so hard for some to understand that God has a specific day that he has set aside for rest and worship and he wants us to observe that day and that specific day as the day he set aside for worship? And so when our text says that God says here in Ezekiel 20, when the text says, Moreover also I give them my Sabbaths, it is not saying that the Sabbath was first instituted at Sinai when God gave the Ten Commandments to Israel. No, the Sabbath existed since creation, but it was commanded anew at Sinai. The Sabbath existed since creation. For the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 to verse 3. The Bible says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day 
and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. And then the word remember, the word remember in the fourth commandment implies an earlier existence of the Sabbath. We say that again. The word remember in the fourth commandment implies an earlier existence of the Sabbath. For Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8 declares, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Suggesting, signifying, an earlier existence of the Sabbath. The fourth commandment in the Decalogue or the Ten Commandments presents the great facts of the creation history as the basis for the Sabbath. We say that again. The fourth commandment in the Ten Commandments presents the great facts of the creation of the world as the basis for the Sabbath. The Bible says God created heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is in six literal days. And the fourth commandment, which speaks of the Sabbath, reminds us of the history of creation. For the fourth commandment says that God created the heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is. On the seventh day, God rested and set apart the seventh day as the day of rest and worship for all mankind. Mark chapter 2 and verse 27. And so, friend of mine, the observance of this Sabbath then is a mark or sign that he who honors the day acknowledges Jehovah as his God. For only to him do these facts of creation apply. The facts of creation that are contained in the fourth commandment. So, by the way, let's just repeat the fourth commandment. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 to 11 says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy manservant nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle nor thy stranger, that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So within the fourth commandment, the Sabbath commandment, is the history of the creation that God created the heavens and the earth and so the observance of the day the sabbath day rests upon an express command of god and a belief in his revelation you know someone said that j vernon mcgee tells this story about a man who wanted to argue about the sabbath the man said I will give you a hundred dollars if you will show me where the Sabbath day has been changed. He said the man was arguing. I don't know. So the man said, I will give you a hundred dollars if you will show me where the Sabbath day has been changed. Vernon McGee answered, I don't think it has been changed. Saturday is Saturday. It is the seventh day of the week, and it is the Sabbath day. I realize our calendar has been adjusted and can be off a few days, but we won't even consider that point. The seventh day is still Saturday, and it is still the Sabbath day. The man got a gleam in his eyes and said, Then, Vernon McGee, then, why don't you keep the Sabbath day if it has not been changed? Vernon McGee answered, The day has not changed, but I have been changed. I have been given a new nature now. I am joined to Christ. I am a part of the new creation. 
We celebrate the first day because that is the day he rose from the grave. That is what it means that the ordinances have been nailed to the cross. Colossians chapter 2 verse 14 end of quote end of story. Ladies and gentlemen, it is that kind of a human reasoning and the pulling Bible text out of context that has resulted in many persons observing Sunday as the day of worship and rest instead of just obeying God's command to worship on the seventh day, Sabbath day, Saturday. Now hear the preacher, all that stuff about being changed and getting a new nature is good. But God did not say in the Bible, well, 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 Vernon, since you have been converted, and since I have been resurrected, keep Sunday holy. God did not say that. Vernon Magee is saying that, not God. And therein lies the falsehood and the disobedience to God's clear command to keep the seventh day Saturday holy. Men have exalted their reasoning above God's clear command and God will hold them guilty and accountable. And by the way, Colossians chapter 2 verse 14 is not saying that the seventh day Sabbath was nailed to the cross. No, the text is referring to the ceremonial Sabbaths that ceased to have meaning when Jesus died and rose again. The text refers to the various laws and decrees of the Jewish legal system such as were terminated at the cross. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 15 also talks about that. Things like Passover. So those are what was nailed to the cross. Those ceremonial Sabbaths, not the weekly seventh day Sabbath. And so men may reason that the beneficial purposes of the Sabbath could be as readily realized upon another day. However, God has specified a particular day. And if you could have a particular social security number and a particular day for your birthday and a particular number on your license plate, why is it so strange to accept that God has a particular day on which he says, worship me and rest on this day? Now, what is the difference between the Sabbath and the other days of the week? On every day of the week, we can work and worship. We can work and worship. But on the seventh day, God says, no work, only rest and worship. Rest and worship on the Sabbath day. And so God has specified a particular day. And he has bidden us to keep it holy free from worldly pursuits and personal pleasures. And this obligation, men cannot with impunity escape. Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 13. And so, friend of mine, the prophecies of Revelation chapter 12 to chapter 14 make it clear that the Sabbath will be the point especially controverted in the days preceding the second coming of Jesus. God's remnant people, God's last day people who are faithful to him, God's remnant people will be distinguished by their observance of the commandments of God, including the Sabbath commandment. According to Revelation chapter 12 verse 17 and Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. And so while God's remnant people in the last days are observing his Sabbath, the seventh day Saturday Sabbath. At the same time, apostate religious powers will be exalting a false Sabbath Sunday and demanding allegiance to it. Men will be called upon to decide at that time between the Sabbath of the Lord, the seventh day Saturday Sabbath, and the substitute Sabbath, or the first day of the week Sabbath, or Sunday worship. The keeping of the Sabbath will thus become a distinctive test and will constitute a sign called a seal in Revelation 12 of God's true worshippers. 
the Sabbath will be a seal, a sign of God's true worshippers in the end time. Friend of mine, the Bible says that God blesses those who love and obey him. Oh yes, the Bible says that God blesses those who love and obey him. And people may decide, well, I'm going to worship on Sunday anyhow. Oh, friend of mine, you can do that, but you will not receive God's blessings. And so God says clearly in Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14, Blessed are they that do his commandments. We can stop right there. The Bible says, blessed, happy, at an advantage are they who keep God's commandments. Not their own reasoning and their own sayings, God's commandments. We say that again. The Bible says that God blesses those who love and obey him. Revelation chapter 22 and verse 14 declares, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city, New Jerusalem, heaven at last. O oh, friend of mine, O oh, friend of mine, if we wish our lives to be blessed, we must love God and obey his commandments, and we must keep his fourth commandment and worship him on the seventh day, on the Sabbath day, on Saturday, from Friday sunset to Saturday sunset, and we will experience the peace and the joy that serving and loving and obeying Jesus brings. May God bless you real good in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much that whatever you ask us to do, you stand by to give us the power to do it. Thank you for setting the example while on earth of worshiping on the Sabbath day, according to Luke chapter 4 and verse 16. Bless that person, Lord, who has just heard this message, who perhaps was taught all along that Sunday is the Sabbath. Give them the courage now, Lord, to begin worshiping you on Saturday, Sabbath, the Bible Sabbath, the seventh day of the week. And may they experience the peace knowing that God is pleased with their worship. Remember those who have made prayer requests, dear Lord, again we place them in your hand. And we want to thank you in advance for hearing and answering each prayer and attending to each request. And grant us, dear Lord, a wonderful day and a restful night. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and Amen.